no Tokyo. Recently, I had the opportunity to travel to Japan to make a mini docu-series on Japan's VR culture. Is it different from Europe and the Americas? Is it bigger or way better? Is it five years in the future or is it stuck in the past? And throughout this series, we'll answer all of that. But for this first episode, we're traveling to Tokyo, the largest megacity in the world and capital of Japan, which is also the home of Thirdverse, a company that has established itself as definitively the largest VR-only game publisher in the country. And the interesting thing is that even though Thirdverse is a relatively new company, just founded two years ago, they have already published multiple smaller VR games to test the market and to learn how VR games work, utilizing a publishing strategy that is pretty different from anyone else in the VR industry. And it's something that we'll definitely get into later. We'll also get to see for the very first time their newest project, a hero shooter built from the ground up for Quest and Steam VR. But Third Verse didn't just pop up out of nowhere making games, and it all starts with someone that has spent their entire life becoming successful in the game industry, only to step away from it to focus entirely on virtual reality. Meet Hiro Kunimitsu. Hi, uh, my name is Hiro Kunimitsu. I'm founder and CEO of Third Verse, uh, next generation of game developer and publisher and then now we are making three VR game title. So before the third verse I was founder and CEO of Gumi and Gumi is one of the leading mobile gaming company in Japan. I found Gumi 2007 and listed at Tokyo Stock Exchange 2014 and then last year I stepped down Gumi CEO position and then start third verse and they're focusing on making a good VR game. And he's not joking about Gumi being a successful company. Japan's game industry works in a pretty interesting way. Intellectual property is everything. If you're looking for international success, it's a proven formula for established Japanese studios to build games under larger companies that have established global IPs, eventually leading Gumi to develop Final Fantasy Exvius, an entirely standalone mobile title that received over 60 million downloads, which makes Third Verse an interesting case study. After such success and such large numbers, why leave an industry that is less than 1% of the mobile world? And I think the answer will be pretty familiar to a lot of you. Now, mobile game is a little bit poor, right? <laughs> so I found Gumi 2007, right? And then I keep making mobile game more than 10 years. Of course, you will get a little bit more, right? And then I want to start something new. And uh, what, you know, VR excited me about is a uh, gamer. They want to have, wow, or this kind of the experience, right? So even back uh, 2016, like you know, VR game is still not mature, really early stage, but wow, this kind of the experience is, you know, tons of that, tons of that kind of the experience provide, right? Yeah, so that makes me uh, decide this is, you know, future of the game, or like, you know, this is future of the entertainment. So that's why I quit and I start that first. So we're about to head to the third first office to get the first ever studio tour, show off their newest game, and talk to the developers. But first, I figured I'd give a random Japan fact. There are lots of great ways to travel in Japan. The Shinkansen or bullet train is one of them. Traveling at up to 200 miles an hour, it'll get you anywhere you want fast, but taxis are also everywhere. And in every single taxi throughout Japan, the seats are covered with a pristine white linen with lace fringe. I asked the locals why and the answer was honestly, don't know, just always been that way. Oh, also, every taxi has an automatically opening door. If you open or close the door manually, it's seen as disrespectful, so if you ever go to Japan, learn from my mistakes and don't touch the door. But we've now finally made it to the Third Verse studio. Gotta check out Third Verse, let's go. Hello! Welcome. Hi! <laughs> oh! Oh, amazing. So I mentioned before that Third Verse has a very interesting development cycle, 
and I have a feeling that it comes from their mobile development background, but it's worth investigating. The idea is make a game that is feature complete and polished and release it for a pretty cheap price that is fair for what you get, but they're not quite at the point of spending multiple years developing one massive title. And that kind of makes sense. I mean, if you spend four years right now making one massive game for the Quest 2, well, we'll probably be at the Quest 3 or 4 by then. And who knows if VR itself will just be an entirely different market by the time the game is finished development. So, third verse focuses on fast iteration and experimentation with VR gameplay, with a pretty simple formula and belief. Hiro now says he plays a lot of VR chat and believes it's successful because of its entirely social nature, but also looks at games like Bone Lab and loves that it's an experience that you can only have in VR. And he says that bringing VR experiences that can only be experienced in VR while bringing people together with multiplayer to have an experience together is third versus bread and butter, which has led to a game like Altair Breaker, a title that allows you to fly around and jump up in the air and slash opponents with a combo, all together co-op with friends. And while their release strategy doesn't necessarily put out 40-hour campaigns, it allows them to experiment and see what works in VR and what doesn't. In fact, their company motto is first to try, first to fail, first to recover. To take on challenges faster than anyone else, fail faster than anyone else, and recover faster than anyone else. And I can respect that, especially because there is no shortage of talent at third verse. And I was admittedly pretty shocked to realize that I was talking to you and giving interviews to leads that had worked at Sony for years and had worked on Astrobot, Demon Souls, and Bloodborne. And I asked every person I interviewed the same thing. Why in the world are you making VR games when you have this sort of background? I mean, you can literally work anywhere in the world on any video game project you'd want, but I got the same answer every single time. <laughs>感じですね。えっと、あそこ、VR空間の中で物を触れて掴めるっていうところがすごくあの、やっぱりこう新鮮で、でもてのこうゲームコントローラーとボタンを押すと剣を振るとかだったんですけれど、ちゃんと自分で
isn't that much on the radar. But the part that I love about the VR industry so much, besides it just being an awesome technology, is that everyone has an impact right now. Whether you're a big or small studio or a game or the community behind it, or you're a player just giving feedback, every single one of your voices has an immense impact. It's not like mobile or console gaming where everything is so data-driven. And from talking to Thirdverse, the industry honestly needs your help. And I'm not gonna lie, this was not the conclusion I thought this video was going to come to when I hopped on a plane to Japan, but I'm thinking it's a pretty good one. Third verse, just like any company out there doing VR stuff, needs your help. Not necessarily in buying their games or giving their money, of course that helps too, but in giving real honest feedback. So one of the main things they kept asking me over and over again to include in this video is to ask the VR community to help in just that. In Feedback, legitimate good feedback. And X8, that hero shooter that I was just talking about, is actually entering a free closed beta next month. And you can sign up with a link down below in the description, and I'd urge if you're interested in a VR hero shooter to sign up and just be real and honest and give good feedback. Because from what they've told me, there's nothing more valuable, legitimately. So go sign up and help them out and keep X8 on your radar. But this also extends to all other VR stuff you ever try out. Give real and honest feedback, not toxically positive and not toxically negative. Just imagine you made the game. How would you want someone to tell you what they liked and didn't like from their experience of your game? And I think that perspective shift is one of the coolest and most powerful things that I took away from visiting Tokyo and talking to Third Verse, is just how massively important all of our voices are and how constructive feedback is more important than making a sale even. And I really hope that sharing Third Verse and their story and what they're working on and their values gives you a positive perspective shift on the VR industry as well. This technology is so cool and we're just figuring it out. But the cool part is that we're actually figuring it out together. So if you enjoyed this video, then I've actually got some really good news for you. I didn't just visit one studio in Tokyo, I visited half a dozen from all over Japan. From games you may not have heard of but need to check out, to stories of developers, to trying out headsets and gloves, this was just episode one of the Japan VR mini-series. So if you liked this, then give it a little love with the buttons and leave a comment. And if you didn't, well, tell me how I can make the next one better, because that's all I want to do. I also want to say thank you to Val Esports, an awesome VR esports company that made this video possible and connected me with all of these developers, but I also wanted to say thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. You guys literally bought Fia and I a bowl of ramen in Japan, and it was the most delicious ramen I have ever tasted in my life. But I really couldn't make content like this without all of you. So I'm doing something pretty special for all of my Patreon supporters. The full-length interviews as well as some behind-the-scenes footage from Japan will be posted and available on my Patreon. So if you'd like to support the channel and see some more of Japan and VR, then the links are down below and it's more than appreciated. But other than that, of course, make sure to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, grill out.